Thanks for watching. I'm Margot Kinberg, and this is In the Spotlight, a closer look at a crime novel. One of the things we learn when we read historical crime fiction is that there are a lot of periods of history that we might not have known much about, even if we should have. So an historical novel can teach us as much as it does anything else. Let's take a look at that sort of historical novel today and turn the spotlight on Naomi Hirahara's Clark and Division. The real action in the novel begins in 1942 when the Ito family is moved from their Los Angeles home to Manzanar, one of several camps in which Japanese Americans have been interned. The family settles in as best they can under the circumstances. Then in 1943, Rose Ito is given leave to move to Chicago, where her parents and younger sister Aki will join her. The rest of the family travels to Chicago in 1944, only to find that Rose has died after a fall from the train tracks. Devastated by this shock, the Ito start the process of organizing a funeral and trying to start to face their loss. Aki is absolutely certain, though, that Rose did not kill herself. She was too strong a person for that and would not have given up on life. So Aki begins to ask questions. In the meantime, both Ito parents, as well as Aki, get jobs and try to get used to life in Chicago. It's not easy as they don't have much money. Besides, there is a great deal of anti-Japanese sentiment, bigotry, prejudice. Still, they do as well as they can, and besides, they're motivated. They want to settle in. Aki's parents do not want her to get involved in any way at all in trying to find out more about Rose's death. They accept it as a suicide and don't want it all raked up. But Aki is determined, mostly because of how close she was to Rose. She wants to find out the truth, so she tracks down Rose's roommates and friends to try and learn as much as she can about Rose's life in Chicago and about what led to her death. It's sometimes dangerous and plenty of people make it clear that Aki's questions are not welcome. The more time goes by, the clearer it is that some people know more than they're saying and that just about everyone wants Aki to stop asking questions. She persists though and in the end she finds out the truth about her sister's death. At the same time, she learns a lot about herself. So what are the elements that hold this story together? What do we see woven through it? There is a strong sense of wartime in the novel, especially wartime in Chicago. There's rationing. People are getting called up for military duty and just about everyone has a friend or family member serving overseas. There's also the element of strong anti-Japanese sentiment. There's the treatment in Manzanar. There's bigotry. There are all kinds of slights, large and small. There are places where they're not welcomed, doctors who won't treat them, and restaurants and shops that won't serve them. Still, the Japanese and Japanese American communities stick together and try to help each other. The novel gives readers a close look at the Japanese culture, particularly as developed in the US. It's clear that these are just normal people trying to live their lives as best they can under very difficult circumstances. Despite their treatment, most of the Japanese Americans are eager to be accepted as the full citizens they are. And they're willing to work very hard for that to happen, including joining in the fight and going overseas. Along with the crimes in the novel, and there are more than one, this is also a sort of coming of age story. It's told from Aki's point of view, first person, past tense, and we see how she grows and matures as the novel goes on and starts the process of working out who she is going to be. She makes friends, dates, finds a job, explores Chicago, and so on. The mystery of what happened to Rose has a very sad solution, and the family doesn't magically heal once they know what happened, but there is a sense of closure, and readers do learn the truth about Rose's life. Clark and Division offers a close look at life in Chicago towards the end of World War II. It features a unique social and psychological perspective, an exploration of the Japanese American culture, and a protagonist who turns out to be much stronger than she thinks she is. 
This has been In the Spotlight. I'm Margot Kinberg. Thanks for watching.